Welcome back to the channel, everybody. So, uh, I have a problem. My problem is with dirty rocks. <laughs> um, pretty much everything that I'm interested in and everything we pick up here on the channel needs some level of cleaning, right? Like, you know, we're finding it outside, bringing it back. Um, you gotta wash and scrub and clean dirts, clays, those types of things off of the material. And pretty much the two types of things that I'm interested in would be Thunder Eggs and Zeolite. So those are like my top favorites, right? Uh, both of which, I mean, you're gonna be cutting um, cutting Thunder Eggs, or if you're collecting Thunder Eggs, you're often extracting them out of clays, um, or, yeah, you know, clay and rhyolite, and the things are dirty, right? And for a lot of that, a simple brush, different brushes work great for cleaning that filth and dirt off. This thing, okay, this is a textile gun. Um, fill it with water, plug it in, psh, psh, creates like a little stream of high pressure water. Works great for about 90% of the things. But you know, when you're cutting and polishing Thunder Eggs, I use that, that, well those two. <laughs> those two things, Richardson Sander and the high speed, the, yeah, the high speed sander from Richardson's and my low speed cerium oxide wheel, which is my own own creation. There's plans up on the website, currentlyrockhounding.com, totally free, go check it out. Well, one of the problems is uh, the, the polish, getting the polish off of these. Now, um, the scrubbing and the textile gun gets almost 100% of it, but it doesn't get all of it, okay? Now, I use the pink cerium oxide, so I can actually show you this in a kind of a better, better way. Um, but even still, even with the white stuff, you're not getting it all. Okay, and we're gonna go over the whiteboard here in a minute and I'll kind of explain some of that to you. The other stuff is uh, little things, right? The zeolites, these little tiny, tiny, tiny crystals, right? And uh, there's a couple of problems. So if you're like breaking basalt, as an example, uh, looking for zeolites in the vesicles of it, looking for zeolites in the vesicles of it, uh, often there'll be like a little bit of clay lining that bug and it has like flaked and fallen into it so if you're like mesolite like different needle structured zeolites it's you're not brushing them out you're definitely not using the textile you're gonna freaking destroy them you know well um one thing that comes up often and uh thanks to rudy chernick's book zeolites of the world he's done a lot of the heavy lifting already and the thing that comes up all often is the ultrasonic cleaner. And uh, I want to try ultrasonic cleaning my zeolites and some of my thunder eggs, see if I can get that little bits of polish out of it. Um, I actually have one already. We will be trying this guy out today. This is not my first ultrasonic cleaner. I actually went and purchased the cheapest, the cheapest ultrasonic cleaner I possibly could on Amazon. And uh, it's sometimes you get what you pay for, right? Uh, this thing's cheap, and I uh, threw a zeolite in it, and it did get some of the stuff off. And you can see the before and the after. I mean, the before is very, very dirty, and the after is cleaner, cleaner. And you can see in the actual ultrasonic cleaner that it did get some of it. But you can still see in the after photo little tiny grains of sand or dirt or whatever still just kind of embedded into into it like there's like a, in this photo there's like that bed of cabazite and it's just i can see it thunder eggs um i've i've been gifted a number of really nice thunder eggs from different people that have kind of polished them there's always a little bit of polish left behind <laughs> always a little bit um but you can clearly see in this photo that at that kind of like margin there's a little bit of pink cerium oxide left um let's head over to the bench and look at the whiteboard and i can kind of maybe explain a little bit better why why i have this problem so let's imagine for a second we are looking at the flat surface of our cut thunder egg and going across it there, you know, you have your flat polished face and there might be these little tiny fractures in it, like so tiny, you're not seeing them with a jeweler's loop, but you can see it when this is clear, right? You have this like clear 
calcining or very light blues, whatever. And the polish gets underneath it in a little fracture that is running at an angle or whatever, getting under there. Um, you're not getting this out with scrubbing. You're not getting it out with soaking. You're not getting it out with the, the textile gun. It's just there. <laughs> uh, just there. And, uh, you know, the, you can see it, in, see it in the photos. So what I'm hoping is that uh, we can tech, uh, ultrasonic clean this stuff out. So let's look at this. So this one is about double what my other one cost. So uh, 60 bucks, and this comes in all kinds of varying sizes. Little lid. Comes with a metal basket, but I'm a little reluctant to take like a clean face of a Thunder Egg and set it face down on the metal basket. So I kind of made my own little thing here and uh, we'll go go like that and hopefully it'll shake some of that stuff loose um, conflicting stuff on the internet about putting your uh, meat hooks into an ultrasonic cleaner uh, some people say that it can burst the the capillaries in your hand I'm not I don't know if there's a whole bunch of evidence for that uh, I'm not 100% sure so to be on the safe side I will be using uh, tweezers and some kitchen tongs <laughs> uh, if I want to put my hands in there. But realistically, you should probably just turn it off. Well, let's see if this thing turns on. So this has a heating feature, and I'm probably not going to use that at all. And just, uh, just do the time. Um, maybe we should just do some short tests here. Um, yeah, so you just turn the heat on. Less interested in that. Let's just uh, do a minute run here and uh, throw this thunder egg in. Um, make sure. Yeah, it uh, definitely works. You can see the flicker here. It's a little annoying, <laughs> annoying to listen to, isn't it? Uh, how does this time work? Oh, wow, 30 minutes, huh? Give it a go. All right, well, I just uh, ran it a little bit here. Let's see what this looks like. Maybe I'll just turn it off for good measure. Well, it definitely broke some stuff off. You can see in there. Little, little crumbly bits. Did it get the polish out? What I'm thinking is I might hold it by the tongs and kind of like suspend it and give it a little shake and do another minute like that and give us a... The best, uh, the best chance of getting this thing really, really clean. Wasn't too bad. So uh, we'll dry this off, and this will we'll get photos under the microscope. And uh, I'm gonna use the nice thing with this is uh, I can kind of like use it as a a little bit of a filter and get all that crud out. Kind of see all that right there in the corner. That all came off of the Thunder Egg. So right here, what you're looking at is a piece of basalt. And in that vesicle, there is some clinoptolite. Uh, and it is very dirty up close. You can see how how filthy it is. So, uh, yeah, we're going to give it a go uh, cleaning this guy up. Um, I wonder if it's better to, it's probably better to have it face down so anything that can just kind of vibrate out of it. I guess I can do both of these. I can do multiple things at the same time. Uh, I have another piece of that. And I will put the other little uh, test test piece that little pocket that I showed earlier the before and afters of uh, we'll put this in there 
and uh, hopefully it can get nice and clean. Maybe we'll do this one a little longer. We'll do it for three minutes. So that was kind of strange. Um, I'm filming holding a uh, handheld gimbal and when I took it off of the tripod, uh, the motors were all tweaking out. And as I stepped back from this, right, they stopped. So just being within uh, maybe like 18 inches or so of it while it was running was making the gimbal act, act really weird. <laughs> Hmm, makes you wonder about this thing, huh? So, you can see we clearly knocked off some stuff. Uh, the real test is going to be looking at it under the microscope. So let's, let's go do that. Welcome to the office. If you haven't seen this before, here's the microscope. And I got the computer over here and all the, all the things for identifying and looking at stuff. So, um, I did a little bit of reading in between shots here uh, and figured out that for whatever reason, when I was within about two-ish, three feet of the ultrasonic cleaner with my phone filming, which is connected via Bluetooth to the gimbal, uh, it was disconnecting the Bluetooth. How? I'm not exactly sure what's happening there technology-wise. Like, in my mind, uh, the Bluetooth connection should be impervious to... I guess the reduced ultrasonic wave coming off of the machine? I don't know. Maybe one of you who are far smarter than me in the realm of Bluetooth and all of, all of that could let us know down below because I, pff, I don't know. That's above my pay grade. Um, this, however, not above my pay grade. Let's look at some minerals, we'll take some photos, and we'll look at them on the computer. So here's the Thunder Egg, here's the before. Um, you can clearly see this polish right here in this white. Now, if this was the white cerium oxide, you really the, it would really blend in. But uh, yeah, so maybe that's the, the actual answer as far as what I should probably be doing here. Um, but you can actually see these two little spots with a jeweler's loop. Some of the other stuff, it's really hard to tell, really hard. So let's see how we did here. So this is the after, and you can see that some of the bigger pieces got out, but there's still uh, still some of these little little bits, which that's not not ideal. It did get some though, uh, and after we go through these photos, maybe we'll discuss some options on making this a little bit better, improving improving it some. Uh, the clinoptilite. So clearly, this is just raw as it came out of the vug and. It's very, very dirty. You can see all this gross stuff here or like packed with little bits of clay and you just, it kind of neat to see, but also not, not the best. Now the angle changed a little bit. Forgive that. I trimmed this piece, but man, you, what a quite, what a difference to have almost all of it off. And it also exposed this little ball down here, which it might be mesolite. I'm not sure. Um, but we still have a, some little particles in here. Um, yeah, but still, like, what what an improvement, right? To go from that, which, to this. Such a difference. Now, there's also some changes in lighting, some different stuff, so uh, they, they don't line up perfectly. Here is the before. So I, you know, I had the other ultrasonic cleaner. This was the before of this uh, bed of, like right there, you can see this uh, cobazite, little cubes in there and stuff. So this was the before with the the cheap one. This is the after, and it did clean some, but there's still a bunch of gunk in here, which is not. Not ideal. And then after this most recent cleaning, it's a little similar. Like, it did get some, if you, like, look down here in this lower portion. Um, we got some, but there's still enough under the microscope to where it looks grimy. <laughs> yeah, uh, I have some ideas, though. Let's talk about some ways to maybe make this better. 
interesting stuff. I'm, I'm a little, still a little perplexed about ultrasonic cleaner disconnecting Bluetooth. And I actually tested it with some other stuff like uh, the earpiece uh, for my phone. So I don't know. <laughs> um, a couple of things that I think I'm going to try. And, uh, you know, there's so there's no guides out there. I haven't been able to find anything where somebody's like, this is how I use an ultrasonic cleaner. Uh, the amount of time, different things uh, for cleaning minerals. I haven't been able to find that anywhere. So I'm going to put it together, I guess. Uh, I wonder if a pre-soak would be good. Like what if I soaked stuff like overnight and then ultrasonic cleaned it in the morning? The amount of time, you know, I'm wondering how does it compare to do one minute versus five minutes versus 10 minutes? Uh, this little guy over here has a heater. Okay, at what temperature should I maybe warm up the water? Should I go above just kind of hot hot tap water? You know, does the water temperature really make a difference in breaking up some of this little particulate? Um, I mean, we're kind of, uh, well, we got one out of three, <laughs> kind of really clean. Um, so yeah, let me know your thoughts. Do you use an ultrasonic cleaner for any type of rocks or minerals? Um, Hey, even I know a lot of people do it for jewelry. Um, if you're doing that, let me know. Are you running the heater? How long? What temperatures? Um, maybe we can figure this out together. I'd appreciate it. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. I certainly enjoy a new new toy out in the shop. <laughs> uh, I'll drop a link down below to it, and uh, you can go check it out, all the stats, all the stuff, you know. All right, everybody, uh, go check out the website, uh, podcast, all the good things, currently rockhunting.com, and I will catch you in the next video.